So if you guys have ever used ZBrush, you will be fairly familiar with a technique such as this. And this will allow us to generate lots of really cool shapes really quick. Okay. So, first things first, we got to... Actually, we're going to use our cube. So we're going to hit tab to enter edit mode. We're going to make sure everything is selected. If it's not selected, uh, the hotkey for that is hit A to select all. We can hit Z to make sure that everything's, everything is selected. We're going to hit W, merge, at center. Okay, so now we have a single point. Let's go to the side. So side view, I'm going to hit 1. I'm going to hit 5 to switch into orthographic mode versus perspective. I'm going to hit E to extrude, pull this little sucker up, and let us start working over here in the modifiers tag. And click on the modifiers, beep. I'm going to click add modifier. And now we're going to add a skin modifier. So, cool thing is that our skin modifier is already working. We can see our little stack of cubes. And what we can do with it is we can actually start pulling things out. Beep, beep, beep. So we've created this little weird scary elephant trunk thing. And it kind of bends in these little directions. and It's, it's cool. It, so these cubes, th this geometry is following the path created by our edges. And a really quick way to generate lots of really cool shapes. But we're going to de delete those. We're going to add some modifiers. So we're going to add a mirror modifier. And the question is, where on the stack should the mirror modifier be? So the stacks in Blender, you have or the the modifier stack in Blender, you have to think of kind of logically. It goes from top to bottom. So in right now the skin modifier is being applied first. So it's going to generate the cube geometry and then it's going to mirror it. So if we extrude this out, what we're going to notice is that we're actually creating two sets of the geometry it created by the skin. So we don't actually want that. We want to have one set of geometry created by the skin and then uh, apply that. So let us go and move this higher on the stack. So these arrows up and down will allow you to move modifiers around. So now we notice that our geometry has regenerated over here and we have some kind of weird topology going on, but it's way better than what we had before. So I'm going to move this in closer so we can actually have a more similar to what we want later on geometry. We're going to add another modifier, the subdivision surface. And because that ends up at the bottom of the stack, that is perfectly fine. So we want to go from mirror to skin to subsurface. Okay. So down here, we also want to extrude this out. And you're going to notice some weird things happening immediately. We have this little little red circle, and then we have our point here. I'm going to move our cursor out so you can see a little bit better. Uh, and now we have our geometry going all willy-nilly in here. So let's kind of bring this up so it re returns to a more reasonable state. And let's drag this out here. So what we've just created is the a torso, kind of. So we have a abdomen, thorax, etc., and we have shoulders and hips. So we're creating a little stick man. And I've created the shoulder, the upper arm, the forearm, and the hand. So thigh and shin and foot. Okay. So, again, I did not explain this crazy little circle that's moving around. Okay. So the red circle is the root of our bone chain. Oh, wait, we're not working with bones, you're saying? Weirdly enough, we are. So these edges will actually, if we go into object mode, we can create an armature from those edges, which will have correct weight painting on them already based off of how far they are away and where they are. So if we click here, mark root, we now have the root of our skeleton at the hips, which is kind of awesome. Well, the pelvis. Um, so that's super useful for later if we're going to animate this thing so we can basically create a rig out of nowhere. 
And let's pull this out so we have a neck bit. And let's pull this out so we have a middle head. And then pull this out so we have a top head. Okay. So we have this scary stick monster beast. Well, stick man. Look at him. Look at him. He's adorable. Okay. So this technique is cool, but we want to actually give him girth like you would with a Z-Sphere model. Okay. So let's go back to our wire frame and... I'm going to show you a secret. We hit control A and we can stretch things out. Control A, pull it out. All right. I'm actually going to pull this out a little bit more too. Pull this out. I'm going to give lots of places on this guy's body some girth. So we now have something more than a Malinor stick. Man, I subdivide. I'm going to give him a little tummy. Control A. Beep. That's a little bit more than I expected. Control A. Drag it out. And big in all these. And weirdly enough, it's um kind of stylizing it for us, which is pretty cool. And okay, add a little more in the calf area. Subdivide. Drag this up. Control A. Whoop. So it's getting closer to some kind of anatomically correct-ish object. Oh, oh, one of the cool things. So to create a foot, you drag this thing out in front, and then you drag out another one in the back, and we've got this little toe and heel setup. That's kind of cool. Um, that Blender's actually doing all this for us. So, also, ooh, so Control-A is pretty cool. We can stretch things out, right? We can also stretch things out like we would using the scale modifier or the the scale tool, uh, where we can lock it to a an axis. So like Z, we can only scale things up and down. X, we can scale things left and right. And Y, we can scale things like this, like weird hatchet feet. But we can use that to quickly create little little feats. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, so we're creating a. Uh, kind of dumpy looking cartoon character. Let's uh, make sure that we're selecting these. Brr, bring this down. And let's just kind of round up his head a little bit more. So we're, the head is going to be a special spot. We're going to actually come in and do some uh, more hardcore modeling there to actually create a, a head that we want to do. Okay. So, in our next lesson, we're going to be going over more details on how to mess around with the skin. So, hit Z to go back to wireframe. And let's uh, hit Shift S and then cursor to selected. So, we've selected our little joint up there at our shoulder. Now, we can go down here and select 3D cursor as our pivot point. Now, we can rotate our little arms up because I want to do a T pose because. I've found in my millions of years of working on things like this that the T-pose is very useful if you're going to be creating a universal rig or using a rig such as that because then, you know, you don't have to, like, create a new rig or reposition a rig every time you want to do this um, or, rep or reposition the character. It just takes a step out. This takes a step out. Makes me makes my life easier. <laughs> kind of good. All right. Uh, let's add some more details here. Subdivide. Beep. Let's add in a butt. Control A. Beep. Okay. So he's a little dumpy right there. Good. I want to add in a little bit more here. Okay. Cool. So we're making a pear shaped creature, which is pretty cool. And actually, what I'm going to be doing is we're going to be creating a, a space-suited astronaut alien thing, and it's going to be kind of awesome. Okay, so let's make some hands. So way over here in the periphery, we have what we can use to create a hand, which is a little nub at the end. And let's start by creating a fan. So extrude, extrude, uh, 
Extrude. I love this geometry. Look at it. It's just gross. Ah, yes. I'm just going to rotate them all as well. Move them out. Uh, so that's four fingers. Yeah, let's give them a fifth. Let's give them a fifth. Extrude this out. And a easy way that I've always found to get proportions for a hand correct. And, oh, uh, never do what I just did. Um, so... The skin modifier is a touchy beast, and I, I I would show you some fancy things like how to crash Blender immediately, but uh, <laughs> I, actually, no, no, okay. So what you should never do is, while in edit mode with a uh, skin modifier there, um, never create a UV sphere because most likely it'll just crash Blender pretty much immediately. If not cool uh good on you and yeah save your save your model okay so what i'm gonna do is create a circle not with my skin and so a way to, to do some like proportionally correct positioning of hand stuff is usually to put a circle out with the center of the hand and just kind of like put these joints in right here because at least with a human hand it kind of matches up like that like around this disc is how your fingers usually are positioned and so index middle ring pinky thumb okay so making a hand is super easy it's just like extrude extrude Okay, cool. So we have two joints. We need three joints. What's wrong with me? Three joints. Okay, well not three joints, but three bones. Okay, and let's do the same thing. Do, 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 do. Okay. So we've created that. The three thumb joints, they're roughly the same spacing. Same thing for these guys. So now what we can do is just kind of, actually we can just select them all, select these guys, and uh, I don't know if we need to select these, no, these, these just these, just the, just the flanges, all right, and hit control A, draw them down, actually let's do these two, because that does look really weird, actually not this one, okay, so now we have these crazy sausages sticking out of our thing that we are calling a hand. To fix that, there's these cool little buttons over here. So we select this little middle point, and we hit Mark Loose. Boop. And lo and behold, we have something that resembles kind of like a hand, which is pretty cool. So, uh, also what I want to do is some little tweaking because I want our this finger to be a little bit longer than the other two. And... This one's way too long. Let's shorten this. Boop. Boop, boop. Okay. So now we've got kind of a hand thing going on right now, which is pretty pretty cool. The geometry isn't broken. Well, over here is a little weird. But uh, we, could, we could fix this. And I don't need this circle anymore. That was just a guide. Let's uh, kind of put things in order here. Okay. So, uh, sometimes what helps is subdividing this and also marking it as loose. Or, yeah. Yeah, you gotta mark it as loose. And we might even want to mark these as loose. Boop. Boop. Yeah. So we're getting a little bit closer to our hand that we want. Um, sure. Also, it's massive right now, so we can kind of shrink it down as well. Let's do that. Okay. So, in our next lesson, we are going to be working on proportions to actually make this thing look good and not completely ridiculous with weird skinny hand fat arm craziness 
And I could actually, we can do a quick thing right here. Just pull that up and make it look more like it's online with itself as opposed to various different depths. And yes, okay, so let's save that for next lesson. Next lesson, we're going to work on proportion. Uh, background image. And to do that, what we need to do, you guys go over here, boop, to the properties panel. And we're going to go down to background images, click check mark, add image. We're going to switch our viewport to a front facing view. And we're going to open referenced files template.png okay so please uh <laughs> please mind my wonderful illustration skills and let's uh scale this thing into our space let's uh kind of scale it up so that we're kind of in similar proportion um uh, scale it down a little bit and then we get to position it so let's move it to the right a little bit, move it up a little bit. Okay, it's starting to look like it's in a good shape. Okay. So we can also lower the opacity so we don't have to have it blinding us when we're working. And let us go ahead and, are we still in edit mode? Yes, good. Okay. So again. Uh, what I'm going to do is position the arm and then scale, or then reposition the points on the arm to fit these proportions. Okay, so I'm going to shift S, cursor to selected, switch this back to 3D cursor as the median point where we rotate around, and I'm just going to rotate everything down. Okay, so this is actually going to be fairly quick, moving this joint in. And I'm going to move the hand back up a little bit because it's quite close to the rest of our body. Let's move that in. So this is going to affect both sides. And it's starting to look a little bit better. Cool. Let's do the legs now. So let's get the knee. Let's grab both of these. Move it into this position. And it's kind of... Yeah, these are in the right place. Okay. So, what I want to do is I actually want to start tweaking the scales of these limbs and bits to closer fit the spacesuit. Okay, so yeah. Uh, also, wanting to let you know, this is my attempt at a spacesuit for our space alien. And I actually went to Kennedy Space Center recently, so I, I'm inspired by that. And it, it was really cool. It was really cool. I saw a lot of really neat things. So I need to kind of beef up the top part. Move the shoulders out a little bit. Beef those up a little bit too so you can see the transition between the shoulder and the forearm. Let's increase this as well. And we're going to be going in and actually doing some modeling to get the proportions more correct and this is looking pretty good on this side and I want to pump this up a little bit more and I'm going to switch it back to the median point oh man this is just creating a crazy space so maybe no no I'm not gonna futz with that I'm I'm gonna once we freeze our mesh I'm gonna futz with it there okay so let's select our feeties and big in those make them the moon boots that I want uh, let's bring in this area and big in the thighs kind of puff this up a little bit so we get like, well, a little bit of exaggeration is completely fine, especially because we're creating a cartoon style character. I want to bring up the heel a little bit more. So now we've got a closer to a bulky kind of space suity look. And what we can see here is the normals are 
acting a little funny. We can fix that later. Um, his shoulder over here collapsed. Let's uh, try to fix that. We may have to do a, a second mirror operation to really repair this mesh. Um, but for the most part, we're going to be in good shape. This is about good. Let's actually add another point between these, subdivide, and control A to draw it in a little bit. Okay, and so we're going to have this big dish around this area to contain the fishbowl-like uh, <laughs> fishbowl -like space helmet, which is going to be pretty cool. And I think we need to beef out the fingers a little more. Also, in my drawing, I have four fingers instead of five, and that'll actually speed up modeling and animation, so I'm going to do that here as well. I'm just going to kind of bring it in. Okay. Now I'm going to separate the fingers a little bit. Okay, and that looks like it's created a decent set of geometry for us to work with there. Okay. So, we have a good starting point. Okay. Um, in our next lesson, we will be converting this into a usable mesh, and we are going to start tweaking it. And... But before that, I just want to look around and see if there's any defects that we can fix immediately. And maybe another space between here. Subdivide. Yeah, that's giving us a, a better curve, which is what I want. Um, and let's actually kind of bring this out a little bit more. Control A. Bring this up. Control A, pull in. It was this like teardrop shape. And I think I want his tummy sticking out a little bit more. So whoop, just gonna push it forward a little bit. And hope it didn't completely destroy our geometry. No, it didn't. Actually let's let's pull it back for now. Make it easier to work with. Okay. So in our next lesson we will be making this a real mesh and beginning our polygon modeling section. So, quick little Z-Spheres-like tool in Blender. Pretty awesome. Oh, I also want to reproportion it so it's in T-Pose again. Do, do, do. Actually, cursor is selected. Switch this to 3D cursor. Select all of these. Rotate 90 degrees or this amount of degrees. This amount of degrees seems fine. And, yeah, that should be good for now. Okay. We'll deal with it later, and happy we're going to convert this crazy mesh into a usable mesh so we can make that. Okay, so alien in a spaceship, space suit. Okay, so I'm going to turn off my background because we don't need it for now, and here we go. So hit tab to enter edit mode, and we're going to actually do a collapse on our modifiers from top down. So apply, apply, apply. Okay, so now we have a mesh. Cool, we've got a mesh. Okay, so things that jump out at me immediately is this crazy topology in the hand. And let's actually focus on this and rotate around it. Uh, we got to fix this. This is all broken and crazy. Um, that shouldn't be too hard. We can all actually just recreate it if necessary. This over here is interesting because it's rendering differently, which probably means it is flipped polygons. So I'm going to select all, hit Control N, see if that fixes it. Yep. Let's actually hit Z to go in and see what's going on. All right. So I'm not seeing anything particularly crazy. I'm seeing a little bit of intersections in this area, but that's fine. Okay. So, we obviously want to mirror it again. And the reason I deleted the, I collapsed down the first mirror is because that was uh, applying the, 
the edge geometry and not the actual geometry that we've generated. And now I'm going to be creating another mirror so we can work on this without having to deal with possible mess ups in the future. So I'm gonna just box select this, so B is box select. I'm gonna click clipping, and I'm gonna drag to the left or to the right, doesn't matter. And let's select all and hit control N just to make sure that all of our normals are calculated in the right direction. Okay. So let's actually go back to the background image again for a second. Let's see what's going on. Okay. So I want these poofy arm things, that's good. I want a little bit of uh definition in the deltoid area because we're gonna be uh rotating around that and we want a little ball kind of shape. And let's switch back to our median point as our active rotating thing. And let's actually grab these points and hit, we can either hit O to turn on proportional editing or we can just click on this little thing and switch between them. So I'm going to click O, rotate down, and you can actually uh, use your mouse wheel to increase the scale that it affects our mesh. So I'm going to Select a size about this and move it down a little hair. Go over here. Uh, yeah. Move this down a little bit more. Move this up a little bit more. Pull this in a little bit so we have a little kind of shouldery action going on there. All right. That's starting to look good. Um, let us also create a little ring out here bring that in so we have this little section that de defines the forearm and yeah let's keep going so I want this guy to look more pear shape and what we need to do for that is just kind of bring this in a little bit so we've we're gonna give him a little bit of a a hunch and a punch in the front so kind of like a pear, pear alien man. And uh, that's way too much. Let's pull it out on the side too to give it better proportions. Pull this in. Okay. Now it's more rounded, more realistic. Oh, we got to give him a little bit of butt too to make up for the roundness in the front. Just drag these points out. Okay. So he's starting to get the peanut body shape that I want. And let's see. So going back here, you can see that the arms are relatively in shape. That's good. Okay. So our major points that we're going to have to fix are the hands and the head. We're basically going to have to trash uh, significant portions of those geometry to actually create what we want um, and that's going to be pretty fun and pretty cool and I get to talk about topology which is one of my favorite topics um, I know a lot of people don't like topology because it's crazy and makes you do silly things like not be able to animate properly but it's absolutely necessary so you can animate properly and so that uh, light uh, bounces off our objects properly as well. And there's some cool tricks that I'd like to talk about at some point. Maybe we'll even be able to to do it in this uh this course, but there is some black magic that I want to do with normal maps in the near future. All right, let's add a uh, another ring down here. And uh turn off proportional editing. So, oh, scale is in kind of bring it up. I want to have a uh, a little bell bottom here because clearly this alien is from space 60s and 70s like our space program. And in the United States, our <laughs> our astronauts wore bell bottoms. Actually, I have no idea, but uh yeah, no little these little things like this I want to have accentuated Okay. Scale. Okay. And 
we're going to actually create excess geometry outside of this to create that little plate there. So anything like a, like a plate or something that's really sticking out, we're going to create a, uh, a secondary mesh to go over it, um, mainly because it would be really annoying to get the edge flow proper and also have everything build out of itself like that. Okay, so in our next lesson, we are going to start cleaning up the hand geometry. Are you guys excited? Ha <laughs> ha, I know I am. All right.